just me or is it getting crazier out there hey everybody welcome to late late horror show i am dino as always and what is going on this is a classic movie review tonight we're going to talk about uh very underrated movie and i'll talk about it and tell you why here in a few minutes but um uh good to hear paul ham subspecies the new one is uh good i can't wait to watch it uh everything else has kind of stunk uh so to hear that that's good that's great um connie clary hello mor what's going on paul ham uh let's see glenn dunaway what's going on uh any relations to faye dunaway <laughs> uh faye ray no um anyways uh black roses uh let's see wtf uh night fright talk show and that is it for right now <laughs> let's not used to me coming on here live on wednesdays uh, lately but um i saw this movie a few days ago and i wanted to talk about it because it's such man if i could go back into the 1920s 30s in a time machine i would do it would i want to live in the time period i don't know maybe I don't know. I'd, let me think on that but i would love to go back in a time machine and, and just be in that era i mean there's something about these movies that i just love i mean there's there's a look a feel the era that it came from that just gives it a little bit of something and uh it's it's if you've never watched, and I'm sure most of you guys have and gals, uh, have seen these classic black and white movies from the silence into the 30s, the 40s. I mean, these are just, they and they, they actually went and colorized this film. How dare they? Ray Harryhausen had, uh, he helped a little bit in, in the process, but that doesn't make it right. Uh, this should not be in color. This should not be in color. And I watched a little bit of it just for the hell of it, you know, the in color version. And uh, let me tell you, man, not good, not good. This is a film that needs to stay in black and white. I uh, have a hello, Kevin Muser. What is going on? But they listen, this is the most dangerous game from 1932. Uh, s stars Joel McRae um, as Bob, uh, Faye Ray as Eve. Uh, Leslie Banks as Count Zaroff and Robert Armstrong as Martin's uh, Martin, uh, the brother to uh, Faye Ray's character Eve. And what's interesting is this was filmed the exact same time back to back uh, as King Kong was. Thus, you get uh, Faye Ray, you get uh, Robert Armstrong two lead characters in King Kong. You get the writers, uh, you get a lot of the production staff and everything. You get the same scenes in this movie. Uh, once they're let go into the forest, jungle, whatever you want to call it, we'll call it jungle, okay? Uh, then what happens is um, you see the set design for King Kong too, especially when they run across the um you know what i i have a picture here uh let, let me uh share it uh real quick uh the king kong scene right here uh that stump that tree there's a scene in here the exact scene without king kong in it of course uh where bob and eve joe mccray and Faye ray are are crossing it and it's just so very cool to see it really is um yeah and i can't forget Noble Johnson, uh, the native chief from Kong, is also in this. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, there's also a, the mute, a mute servant, Ivan. Uh, listen, th there's a few things going on in this movie. Uh, so not only is it, and it's, listen, King Kong's a way better. King Kong's one of the greatest films of all time. But I think The Most Dangerous Game, which M.O.R. just talked about, uh, has been adapted to old-time radio uh, also, Escape, Suspense uh, in particular, and great, great adaptations. But um, uh, th this, this movie okay, of King Kong the Greatest, but The Most Dangerous Game, th this is such an underrated film, such an underrated film. Um, and... and from the actors and actors, actresses and everything. But um, it's interesting too. Uh, it was from the story, the novel that uh, was written by Richard uh, Connell. Uh, so in case you want to know a little bit about that, but 
Um, yeah, uh, just a little, just sitting here, you know, okay, very casual. I'm just sitting here, you guys, you know, just sitting here, just looking. <laughs> Where is everybody? <laughs> um, but you've got a few different movie concepts kind of going on here too. It's kind of like the old, and I heard this from a couple other people who were talking about this, but uh, you kind of got that old dark house vibe. Okay. Uh, in, in, in whole with this movie, uh, especially with the um, Ivan character, who is the mute servant, uh, you know, with, he, he looks just like Boris Karloff in old, the old dark house. Uh, you get you get his character in this, um, and you also get Count Zaroff, Count who plays the he you know he's in a big castle kind of thing on this island, uh, kind of the the Count Dracula character except he's human. Count Zaroff Zaroff is human, so uh, you kind of get that a little bit of that. So you kind of got that. You, you kind of got old dark house because there there are people coming in from you know these shipwrecks into this big castle and uh you know staying the night thus old dark house was from weather but same concept and i, I heard somebody say this because this movie is really about the hunter and the hunted okay so the hunter and the hunted so the hunter hunting the hunter is being hunted anyways it's a little complicated but uh both count zaroff and joe mccray uh characters are hunters and joe mccray's character bob is is a very uh famous hunter goes around the world and writes about his uh you know again something you would see in the 1920s 30s uh with a lot of the serial books that you would see a uh, kind of like tarzan and stuff like that so that's kind of what his character was uh, man, such a young, uh, and I am looking at the chat just in case somebody has to, uh, says something. Listen, I know everybody's off doing something, but um, the uh, Joe McCray, a young Joe McCray man in this film, uh, you can, he's almost unrecognizable because he's so young. But the four main actors and actresses in this movie that I'm going to talk about, uh, did a lot of film, man. Uh, Joe McRae himself, 94 acting credits. Um, Leslie Banks, a little less. Well, a lot less, 36. Uh, so uh, he, he was in uh, he was in a few movies, but uh, not as many as the others. Uh, but very good character. He was your typical, you know, twirly mustache kind of uh, villain, you know, with a, played it very, very well. Um uh, Faye Ray, 126 movie credits to her name. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody knew she actually acted in that many movies. But can I just say uh, how lovely Faye Ray is? Faye Ray is just so beautiful. Uh, let's see. I, I think I've got a picture of her here somewhere. Here we go. Let me, let me open this up and share this because... You have to look at, and this ain't even doing her justice either. Uh, I'm going to share this real quick because uh, I've got some pictures I want to share with you guys, but there's Faye Ray. I mean, look at the beauty. Look at the beauty. Uh, I, there's something about the look in the face. I know it's the makeup. You know, they used to do that thin eyebrow thing. Uh, you could see the makeup around the eyes, the ash, uh, eyelashes and stuff like that, the lipstick. She's just, but Faye Ray was just so beautiful. This was filmed back to back with King Kong, and she is the screen queen from that era, man. And she is just so, so freaking beautiful. Fay Ray, all time gorgeous. Uh, yeah, she's probably my number one. Myrna Loy, Myrna Loy is another one who did a lot of acting back in that period, and uh, she's another beauty. But there are so many Paul that that are just legendary in beauty looks and again just that look and feel to uh the femme fatale of that era is just fantastic but um the the other person the the king kong uh, uh actor robert armstrong uh in this movie he has a 185 acting credits 185 i mean when I looked at that, I was like, you know what? That's a lot of acting credits. I did not know that he had that many, but he was in a lot of films um, along with 
Faye, right? And Joe McRae, of course. I mean, and all of these people went up into the 80s, uh, 70s. Uh, for Joel McRae, I do believe something like that, but um, they acted a long, long time. Um, classy ladies. Yes. Black roses, very classy ladies. Uh, and you know, this movie also, Oh, I didn't mention the, okay. So old dark house, you know, count Zaroff, uh, you kind of got to count Dracula, you know, going on there. Um, you also, somebody mentioned the, the, Second half of this movie, the hunting part of this movie, uh, is like Predator versus Alien. Uh, you know where where the hunter goes out and gets hunted, and it's in the forest area, and they're running all around. Um, it's very very interesting. But uh, you know Count Zar Zaroff's character, uh, he he claims to be one of the best hunters around, and. And, and, you know, nobody can escape them. And there's something that th when they were showing this uh, movie to the first for the first time, uh, the audience actually was in shock with um, the trophy room scene where uh, let me read it real quick. I, I'll read it word for word. Uh, the trophy room scenes were much longer in the preview version of 78 minutes. There were more heads in jars. There was also an emaciated sailor stuffed and mounted next to a tree where he was impaled by Zaroff's arrow and another full body figure stuffed with the bodies of two of the hunting dogs mounted in a death grip. Preview audiences cringed and shuddered at the head in the battle and the mounted heads. But when they saw the mounted figures and heard Zaroff's dialogue describing in detail how each man had died, they began to head for the exits. Oh, man. So these shots disappeared. So there's a portion of this movie that just is not shown, is not out there anymore. And uh, I would love to see it. I don't know if they've put it out anywhere. I, I should have looked into that, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, that sounded pretty gruesome. Um, the trophy room scene is uh, the best part. Uh, it, it's a very cool uh, scene. Yes. Uh, let, let, let me get into talking a little bit about this. Uh, I, I think, you know, um, I think I got most of what I wanted to say there. Uh, but the, it's, you know, the plot, it's it's an hour long. You know, this is when I think a perfect, perfect timing. An hour is right there where... Uh, a movie needs to be. And that was, is what was so great about these early films, most of them, uh, is that you could sit there for an hour and get a great plot, story, action, everything. And the cinematography and the sequence, the actually the camera, <clears throat> choices in camera work were fantastic. There, there's a scene with, uh, you know, a first person point of view with the camera where they're running through the, the forest. And the camera, you can see, is just going right along with it. It's just, it's an awesome scene. And they do that a couple times. They get a close-up of uh, Zaroff's face, too, uh, as he's running with the camera coming back. It's just very well done. Very well done. Uh, I, I really did enjoy it. Uh, but, you know, a lot of, you know, basic scenes, even though they were all, you know, done very well. But, um, you know, basically these, these guys are on a ship. And they're trying to get through the strait. And, um, you know, I think I got a picture. Let me show you. I, I figured I'd show some pictures this time. Hey, Sears James, I like to have all of you on my property and we'll play the most deadliest game of all jarts. Oh, boy. Jarts is a fun game, Sears. Uh, that's for sure. But um, let's see. Do I have a picture of them? Yeah, here we go. Let me share this. Uh, don't ask me why I'm going to share this, but I'm just going to give you some reference to uh the movie itself because uh they're all on a ship they're all being men <laughs> like they do they're all you know all sitting in the ship drinking their uh you know alcoholic beverage of choice and um you know you see bob there because he they're all down there going there's no way i'd be i'd like to be stuck on the island because they're talking about the island that is that they're getting ready to try to you know navigate through 
because uh, they don't want to stop on there because there's rumors, you know, there's rumors. Um, but they're all men sitting there <laughs> and talking. So th these are the guys who actually end up uh, end up getting shipwrecked. It, it, it's it's funny in a way, but not so funny because all those guys perish like they're all sitting there because they were talking about deadly sharks and stuff like that in the strait and um you know they all go down one by one but bob seems to go and start swimming and he makes it to the island you know so uh you know bob kind of comes up to this you know huge castle and uh he's introduced you know ivan comes out he's the mute servant like he's going to kill him or something like that then zarhoff comes down the steps and uh, basically, this is where you get your old house, old dark house feel. <laughs> They're drinking and smoking in the ship's salon, high class. WTF, I love it, man. It's, it's like I said, to be able to time travel, and if you had, if you had all the time in the world to do so, I mean, it, it would just be so cool. It really would. Um, Banda Garcia, Bob, oh, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, the South Sea Islands were not the place to be during that era of filmmaking. You had Most Dangerous Game, Island of Lost Souls. Island of Lost Souls, probably one of the greatest films from that era of all time. For me, King Kong, of course, but uh, Son of Kong, all within a year. Yes, yes. Uh, Robert Armstrong playing the lead role uh, in Son of Kong, of course. In King Kong, you know, he, he played in most of Mighty Joe Young. Uh, also, uh, Bo Bozo, Bo Bozo, what, what the heck's going on? Hey, band, uh, am I missing somebody? Band, is there a band here? Band, oh, band Garcia, uh, Connie, I can't even, uh, anyways, it's Dino, you got Dino today. Um, so Zarhoff comes down, then there's this whole dark house fill where he's he's like tell, saying, you know, well, there's other people that. Uh, actually got stranded here as well, and they're down there. So it's it's technically Eve, Fay Ray's character, and Robert Armstrong, uh, Martin. And they're down there drinking, and Martin's irrelevant kind of in this film. He could have been off working more intensely on, on King Kong, but uh, he was just a, a drunk in this movie. And just kind of a side note, you know, it, it really was the, the Bob – and Eve, the Fay Ray and Joe McRae show with Leslie Banks. Um, th that was pretty much, you know, it when it came to the actors and actresses. But um, uh, greetings, bro, new sub here. Uh, good to hear band Garcia. Uh, yeah, there, you just got me talking casually about a movie, you know. So there you go. But uh, yeah, I mean, love this, love this, love this. Um but, but yeah, you got a drunk brother, uh, Fay Ray. Uh, let me bring up another picture here because I want to talk about this uh, in detail. If I can get this here, let's see. Uh, let me go to, did I put the drink scene here? Yeah, I mean, I showed that one, but then you got this one. It also shows another very beautiful shot of Fay Ray, which, you know, uh, look at that beautiful face. But there's a... Count Zaroff kissing her hand because she gets up to greet him uh, because he says off to bed after they were there drinking for cocktails. Uh, and she's looking at Bob. She's trying to, with her eyes, let him know, hey, something is not right here. Um, you know, people are disappearing because they came with two other people that survived the last boat crash. And um, she's trying to tell him, and she's, he kind of picked up on, he's a smart guy, Bob, Joe McRae, Bob, Bob is a smart guy. When they were sitting there, she was glancing at him, you know, spilled her coffee. And then uh, Zarhoff went to play on the piano too. And that gave them the time to sit by the window. And she told him, you know, hey, look at the, the dogs down there, the hunting dogs. And she told him people are, you know, people are missing, you know, they disappear one by one by one. Uh, so, uh, you know, they slowly, um, they slowly start to figure out that, you know, something's amiss, you know, he's kind of an odd fella and he's got these two scars on the side of his head, uh, from a tiger, I do believe he said, uh, from a hunting trip and nearly died. And every time, 
you know, he, he, he gets this mad look in his face. Uh, he kind of touches that, his scars there. And um, let's see, I think, here we go. <laughs> let me, let me show this picture. Cause it's, it's, it's totally exactly what um, he's doing. Let me share this. Uh, this is Leslie Banks as uh, Count Zaroff. And he, he touches his head every time with these crazy eyes and he looks more like a beatnik is what he does uh so he, he's definitely a beatnik but um and i love the clothes all in black like that you know uh, but but he he does that every time almost like you know something happened to him and you know he's a little bit mentally off you know what i mean uh so you, you pick that up throughout the film for sure but he's very intelligent and i guess when the hunter, Count Zaroff, hunts, he got bored of hunting game, of hunting animals. So he decided, since he's on this island, I guess, you know, I'm going to hunt these people who keep getting shipwrecked. And, you know, they have something, he has something to do with it, why the ships keep uh, getting wrecked. And um, people are abandoned here, but uh, he started to hunt people. And he hasn't lost yet, he says. He, I haven't lost yet. When we get to that scene, you know, uh, RKL remade this as a game of death in 1945. Very cool, Paul Ham. I did not know that. Film noir, 1940s, so good. Yepper. Oh, which, when I start to continue here on, um, tonight, overnight stream, old time radio shows, uh, you have, I put together, uh, stream number one, because there's quite a bit uh, that suspense. You would think it's suspense, creepy, weird, all of that stuff. But suspense also put out a lot of detective, criminal, coppers type shows, but a lot of detective shows. Um, so I put together the uh, number one best of kind of, of suspense, all detective shows. Uh, time stamps are all there, so you can kind of read them with with the stars that are in the show, you know, like um, William Conrad and, and some others, so uh, uh, Dick Powell and all that. Uh, so so you, you will be able to see that. Hey, Kathy, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, just chilling here, man, getting some content up like I'm supposed to do uh, and talking to you uh, fine people. Um, definitely good to have you guys here. The Liberator 2.0, hey. What's going on? Uh, you know, for the people who come in late, if you want to go back and restart it and watch me uh, yammer on about how much I love this movie and, and everything. Uh, and Fay Ray, must say Fay Ray. Hi, Boy Donuts, as always. And Donald Duck, Apple Juice to RTN Productions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, suspense. But yes, I've been putting together that. Um, had a great sci-fi uh, stream last night, I think. You know, these are taking me a lot of time. I'm putting a lot of effort into those streams lately and, and fixing the audio and all that other good stuff. Um, so getting back to the movie, which this isn't going to take long to talk about, really. Uh, but, you know, I figured I'd jump on and do that. Um, uh, and, and the thing is, when he does hunt these people, he gives them from midnight to sunrise, midnight to sunrise. He gives them that period of time on this small island, which even when Bob and Eve are let loose um, on the island and he's going to uh, count, is going to hunt them, uh, they think it's a little bit bigger than it is, but they come to find out, even standing at the peak, that, wow, okay, so I understand why nobody really wins because you know, how small the island is. I mean, with him having the layout and everything else over time, I mean, come on. He he knows all the ins and outs. Although uh, Joe McRae's character, Bob, uh, Fay Ray, okay, so he, he one night, Fay Ray, I, I call them by different, it's even Bob. So one night, even Bob sneak out of their room because Martin's missing. She can't find her brother. Uh, and Martin's off. He's drunk and the count threw him out to be hunted down in a drunken state. Is that fair? 
Uh, and the way he ends up hunting them, I don't think is very fair as a hunter either. But um, so they go down to the trophy room. And, and again, all of that is kind of cut out. Uh, let me show you kind of a picture for reference uh, for anybody who hasn't seen the trophy room. Eh, it doesn't show a aloha, aloha, a lot of, <laughs> it doesn't show a lot. Yeah, today is my day. If you guys knew the past couple of days what I've been going through, you guys would be going, what? What are you going live for? But it, it's all good. <laughs> um, so here it is. Um, th there's Ivan the Mute in the middle there. And then Joe McRae. I love, oh, my God. See, I'm so I'm so I'm into steampunk also, and and you know I love these like kind of crafty little like look at that belt with with the 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 hand grips that keep them in check. I mean, I love everything about what this is. I mean, go back and watch classic horror Hollywood. Uh, I, I, this picture doesn't really show much, but they are in the trophy room, and he gets caught. And um, let's see, I think I have another one with Fay Ray with him in there um, in the trophy room. Uh, where are you, Fay Ray? Yeah, here we go. Uh, well, this is actually when they run out. Uh, I'll share this picture here, too. Um, listen, it's a short movie to talk about. I'm showing you some pictures. Uh, love it or leave it. Uh, no, um, well, there's the beautiful Fay Ray in that silk dress. I love that they all wore silk and satin. Back, okay, so, calm down, Dino. But yeah, see the belt that he's got on there? And look at the look of Ivan. I mean, is that uh, Boris Karloff in uh, Old Dark House or what? I mean, but the Count, you can see looking him in the eyes. Uh, he does give Bob a knife, a, kind of a long sheathed knife. And Feyre doesn't have to go because she is kind of the reward for the winner. <laughs> In his mind is what Count says. Um, but he takes her with her anyways because he says, the girl, I don't have females. I am not going to kill the female. You know, so uh, he goes, well, okay, she's coming with me then. So, you know, he takes off uh, Bob, you know, midnight to sunrise, but he's got a knife in hand and he's going to have some tricks up his sleeve because he's one of the he's a world renowned hunter so can he he out hunt or outlast count zaroff uh, can he uh, yeah he does i mean no spoilers but you know he he does um and don't caption uh, the picture everyone uh well you know what i had a couple of pictures if at the end we we might do that a couple of those who knows but um yes uh, he, he sends him off into the forest and i say forest because it's not well i guess jungle let's say jungle because there are some very lush scenes around the tree and when he climbs up but um you know at first bob and eve take off okay and their first stop is to make uh oh god i forget the name of it but booby trap like in what was it predator was it predator versus alien it might have been where no, no, it wasn't Predator vs. Alien. It was one of the Predator movies, but where, um, because Conan was in it. Damn it. Uh, he puts the booby trap up where it holds this, it's like a trip that holds up a big giant stump of a tree. And if somebody trips it, it falls and just, you're crushed. You're crushed. I don't know what Predator movie that was in, but that's his first step. And, um, you know, I mean, right away you go, listen, Count Zaroff, if he's as good as he says he is, that's not going to do nothing. He's going to notice that. he's He is looking down, but he comes with his bow. His bow is his first weapon of choice. Okay, I get it. Okay. Uh, it's the easiest one to track down and it, with his aim, he's, he's gonna, he can kill. So he comes up to that and um, he notices it and, you know, it, it gets tripped and falls down. Uh, he survives that and he, he, they're back in a cave and he goes, I'm not going to fall for that. I'm not going back into the cave and kind of goes, uh, sneaks around back and he's going to, he's going to come back and track them down. It happened in the original predator. 
Uh, was it the original Predator? Thank you, Paul Ham. Um, so much of that just gets so mixed up. And thank you, Connie, for posting all of that. Uh, 26 and King Kong. What was, what was that all about? Anyways, um, Anani Moose, good to see you. Hello, all you wonderful people. Just woke up going surfing. You are my first port of call. Special thanks to you. Thank you, Anani Moose. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. And enjoy your surfing uh, in the USA, right? Zodiac, interesting fact. Oh, gotcha. 26 deaths. Okay. Um, so that was his first choice of weapon. He goes back. He sees eh, he's a little smart. He got, you know, although all of these during this stretch of the film, some of this stuff is just basic, but it doesn't take away from the atmosphere in the movie and the hunter hunting his prey, who is Bob. You know what I mean? Eve just happens to be coming along. But he comes up next to this. They ha like uh, Eve runs off and she freaks out. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. And jumps over this section from one spot to the other where it, it would drop hundreds of feet down to where the water is. And uh, Bob's character decides to get a bunch of sticks and stuff like that. And, and he tells her to get grass and leaves and all that. They're going to put it over there and try to trick him. My first thought was, he's going to know that that's there. He's jumped over that, I'm sure, plenty of times. But he thought he'd trick him. Um, but Zaroff comes this time with a gun. Um, this is where I go, okay, uh, I know you're a hunter hunting prey and the, the, your prey is humans. Uh, but it seems a little unfair, but I guess the harder it gets for the hunter, Zaroff, uh, he's got to step up his game. So he does, uh, Pink Panther, what's going on? I'm going to have to watch these movies before you broadcast. I keep forgetting. Uh, no worries, Pink Panther, but good to see you. Been a little while, uh, but good to have you here. Um, so it covers all that and they go off behind the bushes. He ties a string up to one bush to move it. I thought this was quite funny um, to trick him, I guess, you know, to get him to run across that and fall. Uh, somebody does fall. One of the, you know, people, uh, Ivan even gets it with an arrow. So, you know, Zarhoff is kind of on his own after this point with the gun, but he shoots the little branch there thingy um, and they start running off and then they go into the fog, the foggy area, uh, the foggy swamp, which another King Kong, uh, area, uh, you get to see there. So, uh, once they hit that foggy swampy area, um, Hey Connie, thank you very much. Uh, super chat 499. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, uh, Connie. I appreciate that. Uh, Paul Ham says, uh, based on the story, The Hounds of Zaroff. Uh, the Hounds of Zaroff. I've missed you guys. Well, it's good to have you back, Pink Panther. Um, but he gets out his horn, his trusty horn. He blows it, and out comes the hounds. And this is where I'm like, okay, now he's hunting this human prey like it's a tiger or something, you know in the wild because out he, he can't beat him. He's, he's tried the bow, the gun. He's going to get the dogs on him now with the gun. Uh, and they come running after into the swamps and it's in the swamps that, I mean, it, there's water, uh, you know, you always try to elude and escape somebody with your scent by going through water. Although the dogs still find their way to him, but he goes through the swamp over an alligator uh, to this tree with vines from King Kong. Uh, he starts to climb him his way up there. It's funny because the hounds are trying to get up the tree after Bob and Eve, who have gotten up so far on the tree with the vines, to get him over to this other area in a second. Um, and he looks down at them and he goes pretty much in regret that he, he feels sorry for hunting all of the animals that he did. I forget the exact words, but uh, something like I wouldn't want to be a tiger now or something like that. And he said there were a few words, but, you know, kind of changing the mind of the hunter, you know, 
while he's being hunted, you know. Um, but yeah, they climb up quickly, you know, and they elude uh, Zaroff and the dogs and um, the others that were chasing him. And there must have been a shortcut around the other way because they start running off there. But he tends to climb higher, gets off the tree because he's up higher. And that's where they there's that scene where he runs across uh, the log. And um, it's the same log scene as King Kong. And I thought that was just very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Do I got some pictures here that I could share from th this? Uh, yeah, really quick. Uh, just going to share a couple. Um, let's see. Share this picture. Yeah, this is Zaroff with his uh, trusty rifle. Uh, what an idiot. What an idiot. Um, <laughs> uh, there's another scene here, too. Let's see. This is, here we go. This is the one with him in the swamp. So let me share this one. Uh, I Because I got to show this one. This is Fay Ray looking beautiful again. Um, there you go. Uh, close up of close up of Fay Ray and Joe McCray. That there, that scene is just, look at it. I mean, that is perfect. Joe McCray. Uh, at his peak. And yeah, I know Pink Panther. you laughing at me about Fayre. Um, and then one last one. Look, look at, I also have to show this. <laughs> I mean, look, look how beautiful the movie posters were back in the day for this. And then I'll talk about the ending of this film. L look at this movie poster or, or this. I think this was maybe one of the lobby cards uh, is what it was. They did a cool thing back in uh, the 20s, 30s, even through the 40s, uh, where they would put the lobby cards out. So the lobby cards would differ uh, in appearance to the um, uh, movie, actual movie posters, which were, you know, long and, you know, usually 36 by 24, whatever. These were smaller lobby cards and um, which have become very, very collectible. But always had beautiful artwork and i mean look at that if you want to put color into something leave it to the poster and the the, the movie uh, cards i mean the yeah lobby cards but uh yeah i just had to show that i thought that was beautiful uh that's when posters and lobby cards almost qualified as works of art yes paul ham well and that's why they've become so popular now i mean Hell, I mean, didn't King Kong's poster uh, go for like a million bucks or even more? I don't know. Lobby cards go for a ton of money. I mean, a ton of money. Um, well, here's a French poster. It, it is in black and white, but I love this one, too. I'd like to show this one, too. Uh, this is French. Uh, Le Chassis de Camarazaro. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but... I just love that. I mean, come on. It doesn't portray what the movie's really about. It looks a little bit more gothic, uh, like, like it would just be the old dark house. But it's nevertheless, it's still a beautiful poster. I really love it. Um, and let me see. Any other pictures here that I wanted to show you? Um Nah, that'll be good. Uh, let's let's finish out the end of this movie, kind of. Um, wow, that one is great. Yeah, Paul Ham, I love that one. It's it's very. He looks so beatnik in it. I love that about it too. But it's very gothic. It's French, you know. You would get that gothic beatnik look to it, although that was just the way his character looked. But um, ending this, what happens is the dogs attack him at the edge of a cliff and off the cliff is running falls and water and all kinds of there's a bunch of water down below so the first dog comes up to him and he he, he kills the dog one on one he's fighting the dog and he stabs it and he kills it and Zarhoff goes another one another one i would he, he should have just sent them all after him right uh, but he sends another one and this time Bob is smart. He goes, you know what? This isn't going to keep going like this. Uh, I'm going to actually take the dog and fall off the cliff and take my chances. So what he does is he falls off the cliff with the dog. And Zaroff thinks, thinks he's dead. He's dead. So he takes uh, Eve back with him to uh, 
his uh, castle. I call it a castle because it looks like a castle. I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, but once they're there, uh, he's playing at the piano. You know, he thinks he's one and everything else. And I love when. OK, hold on here because I, I do got this. It's a bit blurry, but I, I'm going to share it anyways. Uh, the scene where it comes in where he, he makes his appearance while he's just playing at the piano. He makes his appearance and um, he goes, you're not dead. You beat me. And he starts to go on this kind of uh, speech where, you know, oh, you've beat me. Uh, I, I'm a man of my words. And he's slowly making his way over to this side table with a little drawer where there's a gun in it. So he, listen, he's not going to make let him live. But he also does call down uh, Ivan. Or not Ivan, um, one of the the other guy, I forget. One of his, his uh, I, I don't want to use that word on the island, but one who is like a butler of sorts, okay, and serves him. Uh, this was yet another film cited by the British censors as their reasoning for the infamous horror film ban of 1936-38. Yeah, Paul Ham, yeah, that's kind of kind of ridiculous. But, I mean, things times were different, you know. Um the one guy I saw on a collector's show, his movie posters were estimated at $10 million, Sears James. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the the original, any prints from back in the day. I mean, you could talk carnival banners and stuff like that, too. I mean, how much they can go for. But, uh, yeah, let me uh, stop sharing this one and go to another picture because what ends up happening uh, let me get the picture ready. Um, oh, come on. Where's the picture? But I'm bump. Here it is. Okay. So I'll have that ready in a second. So he starts, they start to fight. They start to fight, um, Bob and the Count. And I. this is one thing I love in these older movies that are, are, are just fun is when they start to fight because whoever's directing and if, the, if there was a stunt coordinator or somebody that dealt with the fight scenes in the movies uh, at this point, which I'm sure there were, uh, sometimes the director just took the helms and just said, act like you're fighting or whatever. And, you know, they would work it and practice and then eventually they would start fighting. But it's just kind of like slaps. You know, this, it's like, what's his hand? The hands, the big hands. Uh, who, who's that guy with the big hands from Sherlock Holmes? Anyways, um, they're slapping each other and fighting. But Bob does one re really cool thing. He beats the hell out of Zarhoff, and Zarhoff goes flying over there and slowly pulls out because he does come out of it and starts to pull out his uh, arrows. And uh, meanwhile, his his helper jumps him. So he's fighting two people. Listen, Joe McRae, man, Bob was a, a badass in this film, okay? And he takes this dude and he puts him in a, a hold where his legs across his neck, his legs holding his left arm, and he's got his right arm pulled up. And he pulls them off over into the back of him. And he's got his arms back there like this. And he just, boom, boom. And he breaks his spine. He breaks his back. And he drops. And it's just the coolest thing. The coolest thing. And as soon as that happens, he sees that uh, Zaroff's, okay, he's, he's coming at me again. So he runs over to him. And this picture, which I'm going to share now, uh, happens. So he takes the arrow that Zarhoff is holding, and he just takes and plunges it right into the side of Zarhoff. And you see it right there with him just, whoo, uh, you know, jazz hands, jazz hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Serious jazz. Early horror movies scared the pants off people, twisted their minds. Yeah. Yeah, listen, the, the, you know, it was the early days of seeing this stuff on the screen. Some people for the first time 
So seeing stuff like this actually on a screen and a big screen um, scared the hell out of people. So yeah, definitely. Uh, good to see you, Cyberpup, if you're here. Um, how come I don't see you? Uh, where's Cyberpup? But anyways, nevertheless, um, I don't see Cyberpup. What's going on? So he sticks this in, and then what's going to end up happening is uh, Bob and Eve comes running down. Bob and Eve run down to the trophy room because Zarhoff handed him the key to the boathouse, if him, thinking he's going to kill him. So they run down into the boathouse, the trophy room, go through the doors, get down to the boathouse, get into the boat that is all good and ready it's it's a motorboat so he's they can start it up and they they start taking off and um there's one last picture i'd like to show you um if it's clear enough let's see let right here okay so um i just figured the pictures would be fun so the very last scene when bob and eve are taking off from the boathouse he is still alive, Zarhoff, and he makes his way over to the window, opens it up, and he's going to shoot and plunge the arrow straight into the back of Bob, who is getting away in the motorboat. And uh, bef before he could do that, Bob and Eve turn around and they look up at him in the window, and below are his guard dogs. And I love the camera angle is from the inside of the castle, okay, with Zarhoff slowly rolling out down where the guard dogs are, the hounds and the ocean off into the distance. And it was just beautiful cinematography for the, for the, for the time, uh, a beautiful scene ending the movie. Uh, I, I just, I, I thought that was just so well done. So well done. Um, and I mean, you know, that, that really is, and that's the end of the movie. That really is it. I mean, he's still alive, broken spine and stabbing. Uh, no, no, he didn't get the broken spine, Pink Panther. It was his helper because they kind of double teamed him. Uh, Bob kicked the crap out of Zarhoff and he was laying off on the side when his helper came running down the steps. It wasn't Ivan because he, he got it in the jungle. Uh, poor Ivan. Uh but his helper came down. He's the one that got it. So he took care of two people at once. I'm telling you, Joe McRae was a badass in this movie. Um, but yes, it was it was very well done. I think it's a very underrated movie. I think maybe because of that tie-in with Back to Back with King Kong. But, uh, you know, a little bit more recognition, I think, for this movie. But um yeah, I think it's a cult favorite for a lot of black and white horror lovers out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, just very cool. Very cool. So, you know, that's that's what I got for the movie. I mean, uh, let's see. Was there anything else that I could bring up? Um, yeah, jungle sets were also used for simultaneous filming uh, of jungle scenes in King Kong, 1933. Came out the next year. The actor playing Ivan. Uh, was Noble Johnson, a multi-talented black American who was a childhood friend of Lon Chaney. This is the earliest known instance of a black actor playing a Caucasian character. So there you go. A little bit of information on that. Uh, some of the screams of the sailors at the beginning uh, as the ship sinks are the same as the screams of the sailors in King Kong when Kong shakes them off the log. So using some of the same production uh, stock, uh, just very, very cool. And like I said, original story was by Richard Cano, uh, is one of the most uh, anthologized short stories of all time. Uh, as we said, uh, showed in Escape, showed in Suspense, and I... I'm not sure. Did Lux do a presentation of this? I'm not sure. But maybe Mercury Theater, Columbia Works, one of those did. Uh, it, it's been adapted many, many times. And like uh, Paul Ham said earlier, too, uh, using it as a different title and uh, different name. The theme of this film has been used since in so many TV shows and movies 
over the years. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Very cool. Um, yeah, you know, this is just a, a kind of a movie review short thing. Uh, I could go on technically for another 40 minutes. We're in 50 minutes, but uh, I think I'm going to leave this as it is here. Uh, I, I would like to start doing more movie reviews, talking like this, just very casual movie reviews. They're not your typical movie reviews out there that are like seven, eight minutes long. Um, you know, I'd like to sit with you guys and chat while I'm talking about certain films, show pictures, um, stuff like that. Maybe include other things. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to make some of these movie reviews um, a little different. You know what I mean? So uh, this was a short one, but uh, look forward to suspense tonight, overnight. Uh, detective compilation number one. So all your, like it says, the criminal element, that's what I titled it because every episode, that's what it's about. Either a detective, some kind of criminal thing going on. So uh, look forward to those. Uh, Lexi just got home. Hi and bye. <laughs> See ya. See ya, Lexi. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing more movie reviews and stuff like this. Uh, this one's probably one of the shorter ones. I usually do go the full hour and a half, but um, I think I've said what I need to say. How about that? Uh, and me and Dave Pluffet will be back on Sunday, Sunday for uh, Ghost to Ghost AM. 1996, Remembering Art Bell. It's our series we're doing, Remembering Art Bell. Um, Saturday night, I've got Suspiria, the old Suspiria for Trivia Night. I might change that up. I've got two thumbs up, so that tells me right off the bat that I don't think everybody's so interested in having another Suspiria um, mm, Trivia Night, so I might change it up. I might do Friday the 13th again. We're getting close to Halloween. So I might do another Friday the 13th or another Halloween. Um, so just look forward. That, that might change, but that's okay. Uh, Jimmy hopes you're feeling better, Dino. Oh, my God. Yeah. Unfortunately, my son got a, he had a fever. He's been out of school for two days. Uh, I It was about a day I was feeling really out, a um, little stuffy. Flonase, let me tell you, it works wonders. Uh, you know, at the first signs of a cold, man, my doctor said, use Flonase, and, and it helps. But anyways, Suspiria was crazy. Yes, and I've done a trivia night on Suspiria. But, um, yeah, we, we, we shall see. We shall see. You always look forward. Tomorrow night, I'm working on right now finishing up another creepy pasta. A little longer. I told you they're going to get longer and longer. The one last night, I hope everybody liked it. Uh, it was it was roughly around 13 minutes. It's going to be about double that, this one. Uh, and it's a very interesting theme. But I hope you guys are enjoying the creepypasta. Uh, I put the creepypasta up on my TikTok, this, uh, the one from last night, and quickly got 800 views on it. So... Uh, I think it's standing more on TikTok than here. So, but anyways, I hope you're enjoying those. Uh, I know Horror Junkie is. Um, but with that said, you guys, uh, much love to you guys. Uh, short one.